हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो वेलकम टू द लेक्चर ऑन नॉन निगेटिविटी एंड इड्यूसिबल मैट्रिस सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट पॉजिटिव मैट्रिस वेयर वी हैव सीन सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ पॉजिटिव मैट्रिस स्पेशली ऑन अबाउट द स्पेक्ट्रल रेडियस ऑफ सच मैट्रिस वी हैव सीन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पेरन वैल्यू एंड पेरन वैक्टर ऑल्सो इन दैट लेक्चर सो लेटस कंटिन्यू Uh, in the same direction from non uh, positive matri matrices to non negative matrices in this lecture so a matrix m which is a real matrix of size m by n is said to be non negative whenever each entry of this matrix is non negative it means zero is allowed here unlike the case of positive matrices where we are having each entry is strictly greater than 0 such matrices are denoted by capital a is greater than equals to 0 so for example 1 2 0 3 this 2 by 2 matrix matrix is a non negative matrix similarly this 3 by 3 matrix is again a non negative matrix but these two are not positive matrices this particular matrix is a positive matrix moreover every positive matrix is a non negative matrix in the sense that it is not having any negative value let us go through the same result which wa we were having in the case of positive matrices in terms of spectral radius so let a b n by n matrix having spectral radius as small r then the following statements are true the first one is this r which is the spectral radius of a belongs to spectrum of a but r equals to 0 is possible in this case which was not possible in case of positive matrices there r will uh, should be strictly greater than 0 the second is about the eigen vector so if az equals to rz means z be an eigen vector corresponding to eigen value r which is the spectral radius for some z belongs to set x and such a vector will be a non zero vector and uh, a, a vector which is greater than equals to 0 means each entry is no non negative so for example if you consider this 2 by 2 matrix then the spectral radius of this matrix is 3 and the eigen vector corresponding to this spectral radius is 1 1 which is not having any negative uh, component my next definition is reducible matrices so a n by n matrix is said to be reducible matrix when there exists a permutation matrix p and you remember that permutation matrix is product of elementary matrices means after applying the elementary row operations on the identity matrix you can get permutation matrix so if you are having such a permutation matrix p and you take the product of p transpose a p if it comes out in this form where x and z are square matrices it may happen that they are of different order and this matrix form is like this a square sub matrix x y 0 and z then we say that a is a reducible matrix so consider a equals to 1 0 1 1 if i take p a 0 1 1 0 then so it is a permutation matrix where what i have done just i have interchange the first and second row of the identity matrix so if i calculate p transpose ap we found that the product is an upper triangular matrix so here x is 1 by 1 y z is 1 by 1 and it is an upper triangular matrix so a can be reduced into upper triangular matrix by this particular transformation so hence a is a reducible matrix so if a is not reducible then we will say that a is a an irreducible matrix 
here the p transpose into a into p is called symmetric permutation of a. It means that we are applying the permutation matrices from both side because if p is permutation matrix, so p transpose. The effect is to interchange rows in the same way as column are interchanged. Now, let us see the graph what we can say about the graph of such matrices. So, the graph of matrix A is defined to be the directed graph on n nodes if the size of A is n by n having n 1, n 2, n n edge nodes in which there is a direct edge is leading from n i to n j if and only if a i j equals to not equals to 0. So, if I am having a matrix let us say 2 by 2 matrix 2 0 1 1. Then here I will be having 2 nodes in the graph of this matrix and I will be having an edge if there is a, a non 0 entry at this position. So, if you see a 1 1 position here I am having a non 0 entry. So, I am having an edge from 1 to 1 and edge will be an a direct edge. If you see from you can write like this n 1 n 2 n 1 n 2. So, if you see from n 1 to n 2 this particular entry is 0. So, there is no connection from n 1 to n 2 a direct connection. If I go from n 2 to n 1 yes I am having an edge due to this non 0 entry and then I am having n 2 to n 2. So, this if this matrix is A, this is graph of A. If I take a 3 by 3 matrix 3, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 2, then here it is a 3 by 3 matrix. So, graph of this matrix will be having 3 nodes, let us say n 1, n 2, n, n 3. So, I am having an edge n 1 to 1 to 1 due to this non 0 entry, then I am having an edge from n 1 to n 2 due to this entry 1 to 3 I am having 0. So, I do not have any edge from 1 to 3, then 2 to 1 0, 2 to 2 each yes I am having an edge, 2 to 3 I do not have, 3 to 1 I am having an edge 3 to 1, 3 to 2 yes and then 3 to 3. So, this is the graph of if this is my matrix B then this is graph of B. So, in this way we can define the graph of a given square matrix. Now, so if G A is the graph of A then G of P transpose A P equals to G A whenever P is a permutation matrix. The effect is simply relabeling the nodes. Here this graph is called strongly connected if for each pair of nodes n i n j there is a connection of direct edges leading from n i to n j means you are you can reach from n i to n j by a sequence of edges. So, if you go here like if I talk do I have a connection from n 1 to n 3? I do not have because I cannot move from n 1 to n 3 by using any sequence of edges of this graph. Yeah, if I am having an edge like this means 2 to 3 entry is 1. So, if this entry is 1, so I will be having this edge. Now, I am having a connection from n 1 to n 3 because I will go like this from n 1 to n 2 and then n 2 to n 3. I can move from n, n 1 to n 2, I can move n 2 to n 3. In the same way I can move n 2 to n 1 because I will reach from n 2 to n 3 and then n 2 to n 1. And then I can also move n 2 to n 3. I can move from n 3 to n 1 as well as from n 3 to n 2. So, hence I am having connection between all the edges. So, this graph is a strongly connected graph in this case.
if I remove this particular edge. So, if I do not take this edge then this particular graph is not a strongly connected graph, but if I add this edge here then it becomes a strongly connected graph. So, if I see the relation between a strongly connected graph and irreducible matrices then I will be having a very elegant relation between these two and that is A is an irreducible matrix if and only if G A is strongly connected. So, let us take example. So, if someone ask you given this matrix 1 0 0. So, it is a matrix let us say A 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 check whether it is an irreducible matrix or not. So, just make the graph of this matrix. So, n 1, n 2 and n 3. So, we are making the graph associated with this matrix. So, I am having an edge n 1 to n 1, I do not have n 1 to n 2, n 1 to n 3 this is 0, then 2 to 1. 2 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, 3 to 2 and then 3 to 3. So, what I am having this is the graph associated with this particular matrix. Now, is it strongly connected? If I want to go from n 1 to n 2 or n 1 to n 3, it is not possible here in this case because there is no sequence of edges by following that I can move from n 1 to n 2 or n 1 to n 3. So, it is not strongly connected, it means this matrix is not reducible. So, it is a reducible matrix. On the other hand if I take another example let us say A 2 which is let us say 1 2 0, 0 3 4 5 6 7. So, please note that I am having the same number of zeros in this matrix also whatever I was having in the case of matrix A 1. So, again if I make graph here N 1, N 2, N 3. So, 1 2 1. 1 to 2, 1 to 3 there is no direct edge, 0 to 2 to 1 no, 2 to 2, 2 to 3 yes, 3 to 1, 3 to 2 and 3 to 3. So, now if you check this I can move from n 1 to n 2 using this edge n 1 to n 3 by moving first n 2 and then you following this edge. I can move from n 2 to n 2, n 2 to n 3 as well as n 2 to n 1, I can move n 3 to n 1 as well as n 3 to n 2. So, it is a connected graph. There are another method if you are having more number of nodes like 20 nodes. So, there are several algorithm for checking this particular thing whether the graph is strongly connected or not. So, there are different algorithm, but I am not discussing those in the, uh, this particular lecture because that is the part of a separate course. Just I am making an understanding of matrix and how can we use graphs for checking whether the given matrix is reducible or not. So, here it is a strongly connected graph. So, it is a reducible matrix. So, this is the relation between these two matrices. My next result is the parent profanious theorem in case of non negative and irreducible matrices. So, the statement of this theorem is something like that let A belongs to a n by n matrix having real entries and it is an 
reducible matrix with non negative entries it means it is reducible as well as non negative matrix then we are having few statements we can make few statements for this particular matrix that a has a positive eigen value equal to its spectral radius. The second is the Eigen vector corresponding to rho a is a positive vector. The third is this particular icon value rho a which is the spectral radius also is a simple Eigen value. that is I in other words I can write it there is a single Jordan block of order 1 for this particular Eigen value or index of this Eigen value is 1. The fourth result is this Eigen value rho a increases or decreases when an entry of a increases or decreases. So, in other way the spectral radius of a if a is irreducible and non negative depends on entries of a. If you increase any of the entry of a the spectral radius will increase if you decrease the entry of a the spectral radius will decrease. That is if A and B are two non negative reducible matrices. with each entry of A is greater than equals to 0 and each entry of B is greater than equals to corresponding entries of A and n not equals to B means some of, of the entries are equal to A and some of the entries are greater than the corresponding entries of A then according to this I can say that spectral radius of A will be strictly less than the spectral radius of B. So, this theorem is called Perron Frobenius theorem in case of irreducible and non negative matrices and these for beautiful properties of such matrices 
can be used in many applications in various engineering discipline. So, here I am not taking the proof of this uh, theorem because it is quite big. So, one can follow the book if someone is interested in the proof we will see the applications of all these. Let us see few more consequences of the fair and Frobenius theorem. So, let me write as lima 1. So, if a is a n by n matrix having real entries and it is reducible and non negative matrix then i plus a raise to power n minus 1 will be a positive matrix. And the proof of this can be done like this the matrix i plus a raise to n uh, power n minus 1 will be the linear combination of the matrix is i a a square a cube up to a raise to power n minus 1 with positive coefficients. Why positive coefficients? Because a is a non negative matrix. So, there you cannot take uh, mean there will not be negative coefficients comes uh, come, came into picture. So, using that fact and using the result from the uh, parent Frobenius theorem we can prove this particular result. The next is the another lemma on the parent Frobenius theorem it say me that for any square matrix m if the spectral radius of this matrix is less than 1 then the matrix series let us say summation k equals to 0 to infinity m raise to power k means it is i plus m plus m square plus m cube up to infinity this infinite series converges. And in particular k equals to 0 to infinity m raise to power k will become i minus m raise to power minus 1 means if you open the binomial expansion of this you will get this infinite series. The another beautiful property of such matrices we see that let x equals to lambda x means a is a square matrix and x is an eigenvector of this corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. Then lambda is multiple means it is not simple means the index of this is greater than 1 if and only if there exist y another vector y such that a transpose y equals to lambda y and x and y are orthogonal means the dot product of these two vectors are 0. So, these three properties we will use in the proof of parent Frobenius theorem and then one can prove it. Now, after reducible and irreducible matrices let us come to next definition that is about the primitive matrices. So, a non negative irreducible matrix A having only one eigenvalue let us say that is its spectral radius on its spectral circle is said to be a primitive matrix. So, 
if in the case of non negative and irreducible matrix there exists only one eigen value which is on the spectral circles then the matrix is called primitive if there are more than one eigen values those are lie on the spectral circle then the matrix is called imprimitive matrix and that the number of those eigen values those are the uh, spectral circle is called the index of imprimitivity. So, that number is called index of imprimitivity. So, sufficient condition to be primitive for a given matrix is it should be non negative, it should be reducible and there should be a positive element on the main diagonal of that matrix. If these three conditions ho hold for a given matrix, then the matrix is a primitive matrix. Another test for checking the primitivity which is very useful when you are solving the examples is the Frobenius test. And Frobenius test tells us that a non-negative matrix A is primitive if and only if and size of A is n by n a raised to power n square minus 2 n plus 2 is a positive matrix. So, if this happen then A is primitive. Let us see an example of this. So, determine whether or not this par uh, particular non negative matrix is primitive or not. So, here this example is So, what I need to check I am having this matrix A and I have to check whether this matrix is a primitive matrix or not. One of the ways you just find the spectral circles of this and Eigen values of this matrix. If only one Eigen value is lie on the spectral circle then it is primitive otherwise it is not. The another is Frobenius test. So, how to use Frobenius test? It is a 3 by 3 matrix. So, here n square minus 2 n plus 2 becomes 3 square minus 6 plus 2. So, it is 5. So, we have need to check a raised to power 5. If it is a positive matrix, then a is a primitive matrix. So, here if I need to calculate a raised to power 5, what I need to do? I have to multiply a 5 times. Instead of a, let us write a Boolean matrix corresponding to a, which is a matrix of 0 and 1 only. So, the Boolean matrix corresponding to a is a matrix of 0 and 1 of the same size if there is a 0 entry it will be having 0, if there is a non 0 entry there we will be having 1. So, like first row of B will become 0 1 0, second row will become 0 0 because these two are 0 entry and here instead of 2 I will write 1, then 1 1 0. So, a raised to power 5 will be a positive matrix means all the values all the entries in this matrix will be positive when b raised to power 5 will be having all the entries as 1. So, if I calculate I what I found b raised to power equals to 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 which implies that a raised to power 5 is a positive matrix which implies A is primitive. So, this is the way of applying Frobenius test for checking the primitivity of a given matrix. Now, if matrix is not primitive it is called imprimitive 
and the number of eigen values those lie on the spectral circle is called the index of imprimitivity. If someone asks you find the index of imprimitivity of A, where A is this 4 by 4 matrix, then what I will be having the characteristic polynomial of this matrix A is lambda raised to power 4 minus 5 lambda square plus 4 equals to 0. So, here eigenvalues are plus minus 2 and plus minus 1. If I make the spectral circle of this matrix, so the first row will give me the spectral circle as the center at 0 0 and radius is 1, second row will give me lambda or absolute value of lambda less than equals to 2 plus 1 3. So, it will become center at origin 0 0 and radius is 3. And then fourth row will give the same, fifth row will give as the first row. So, these two are the spectral circle for the given matrix and eigenvalues are 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2. So, if you check these two eigenvalues lie on the spectral circle. So, hence here h equals to 2 means index of imprimitivity is 2 here. If there is only one eigenvalue which is on the spectral circle, then the matrix will become a primitive matrix. Please note that. Another way of checking index of imprimitivity, you just write the characteristic polynomial and now see this polynomial like this. This is my just what you have to do, you have to count the non zero coefficient. So, it is let us say k 0 it is k 1 then so k 0, k 1, k 2, k 3, k 4. Now, see the subscript where the coefficients are non zero. So, if you see the coefficient of uh, which is uh, corresponding to k 2 is minus 5 which is non zero. So, here take k 1 h 2 again the coefficient which is corresponding to fifth location is non zero. So, that is my if uh, I am taking k 5. So, it means there are 2 and 4 position second and fourth position where the coefficients are non zero. So, G C D of these 2 will give you the index of imprimitivity. So, G C D of 2 and 4 is 2 and this process is mentioned here. So, in this lecture we have learned about reducible, irreducible, dear respective graph, how to check whether the given matrix is reducible or not and then about the primitive matrices. In the next lecture, we will learn the polar decomposition of a given matrix. These are the references for this lecture. Thank you very much.